Well, greetings you Sonic Masterminds. This is Trolls from ATO, and in this video, I'm gonna be demonstrating our brand new ATO Prepared Studio Grand Piano. It's actually the same piano we used for our 1990 Studio Grand, which is over 48,000 samples of a deep sample Yamaha C7. It's just a gorgeous library. But we went back and decided to just try every single possible articulation we could in terms of prepared form, and we ended up with no less than 38 variations. That's 38 completely different ways of handling and mangling and torturing and playing uh, alternative variations on a piano, and it's just gorgeous. In this video, I'm gonna be mainly focusing on what we call our prepared piano plate articulations. You'll see them right here. And these are more sort of traditional tonal patches. We have another video where I'm demonstrating some of the more percussive elements, some of the effects elements as well. But there's a lot to go through just in terms of the more uh, traditional tonal patches. And when you see this triangle here, it actually indicates that there are different samples for pedal up and pedal down. And some of them are rather different when you do that, depending on how we manipulated the piano. But uh, I'll go into that uh, a little later in the video and demonstrate. Um, I'll demonstrate all the patches. But um, to get things started here, let's um, enter the piano here. You click down here and you'll be going into the piano and you see a variety of knobs here in front of you. The first one here is important. This is our response button and it adjusts the velocity curve, the velocity of response of the instrument. So depending on how your key controller is set up, um, it'll adjust to that. So I personally like things a little softer. So I really had to play hard on my keys for things to burn through. And normally that would mean you would dial it down here to the left side. If you want a hotter, more sort of attack pop sound, then you dial it to the right side here as well. So it really comes down to how you like your piano and how responsive you want it based on your controller. So it's an easy way to connect to the piano. We've had this constant issues with virtual pianos. They don't feel like the real deal. And part of that is the velocity response. So this is a very quick way of dialing in sort of the right feel on your keyboard and exactly what you want. We have resonate controllers here, which is awesome. This knob here allows you to control the sound of both the strings and the hammer. So you can adjust the volume of those. And that's great if you want more sort of quirky, unique details from the instrument, you dial this one up and get more volume from that part of the instrument. You can control the volume of your foot pedal. And of course, all this is round robin based as well. Release triggers and analog noise. And of course, you also got your ADSR here as well. We have the same microphone setup that we also had in our 1990 Studio Grand here. So we got Neumann's, Neve ribbon mics, um, AKGs and uh, Coles as well. And they're just phenomenal mics. These are the best mics you can get recorded through a custom Neve console. Uh, I'll demonstrate them very briefly as well, um, just to go through them so you can get a feeling for them. We also got two Studio Reverbs here. And when I say reverbs, it's not just the traditional, oh, okay, we just added a convolution to contact and here we go. These are actually all the samples sampled through two of the best studio reverbs in the world, the TC6000 and the Bricasti as well. And they're just phenomenal. And I'll demonstrate them as well. You can uh, adjust both the pan, the spread and so forth and run both of them if you want. And it's just really gives you that complete, perfect, beautiful reverb that is really only obtainable through the hardware unit. So it's just a beautiful addition to the library for really getting the right sound down here. But, and why don't we just get into the nitty gritty of things. Let's get the articulation browse up here. And as you can see, there's a lot of different tonal patches here. The triangle here actually indicates that we sampled different samples for pedal up and pedal down as well. So there's some very unique results coming out of that. But let's start here with the plucked and let's just go back here to the reverb and um, I'll try to sort of dial it in so you can hear just how magical it is and how much you can manipulate the sound from its dry state into a much more wet version. Let me also show you the mics here. Let me just uh, load them here. Um, I'll load all of them actually, and you can see the memory footprint, of course, is gonna go up a little bit on that. Uh, I'll just try to solo the mics so you can hear them. Obviously, you got different um, types of mics depending on what sound you want, and it's just great for dialing that perfect mix, whether you're doing rock, pop, uh, or more alternative ambient styles, you can really dial in the right sound, and these are the best mics that you can possibly find for piano recording. So you're really getting the best of both worlds in terms of the verbs, in terms of the mics and the ability to dial in the sound. The mixed mic here is uh, what I'm gonna be using for most of the, um, the demos here. Uh, it's just a perfect mix where we took all the mics and found that sweet spot mix where you can really get the, the right sound in. But uh, let me just try to, um, to demonstrate all the mics here. Uh, let's start with the ribbon and then I'll just go through them.
All right, but let's uh, get a little deeper into the library here. We have the pluck articulation loaded here, and I think it's a phenomenal one because it has round robin on it and there's a lot going on. So when you play it fast, you almost get this uh, metamorphosis between a piano and a guitar and a percussive instrument of sorts. It has, just has a great sound. Check it out. And in essence, that's exactly what happens when you put a guitar plectrum on a piano, a guitar pick, as some would call it. Um, and of course, there's no way you'd be able to play something like I just did on a piano with guitar picks. That's impossible. I should also mention that everything you hear is raw and unmanipulated. It's not like we went back and started sound designing any of the sounds. These are actually true sounds from the prepared piano, and that goes for every single thing in the library. All the 36,000 samples are done that way. And it's interesting because some of them actually sort of takes you into the realm of traditional sound design and sort of have a unique uh, texture to them that you wouldn't really associate to a piano, particularly when you start using our stack function here, where you can take multiple articulations and blend them together. Well, I'll, I'll demonstrate that a little later. Let's go up here to, uh, yeah, let's do the muted short here. Um, the muted short is more of a typical staccato note. If you can imagine, you slightly put your fingers on the string and mute them. Um, that's exactly what you get. And we also did the same thing, and I'll play that as well, where we did them long. So these are sustained notes, but still with that gentle touch of finger uh, on the string, muting them, and um, very, very beautiful percussive quality as well, but softer than the guitar pick. Such a gorgeous sound. I mean, it sounds like um, almost like a string instrument, like a piano, violin, or piano, cello played real fast on a keyboard version. Uh, sort of interesting. Um, check this out. This is the muted long, so the same concept. But if you look here, we have a triangle, and that indicates that we sampled both pedal up and pedal down. So these are longer notes, but also with the sustained pedal down. So it's um, it's not as percussive and short as this one, and there's a real variation between using the pedal down and up on pre certain prepared piano articulations. You're gonna hear it um, specifically in this one. I'll try to play um, a little bit of both so you can hear how different they sound and how well they go together. So again, sort of a brand new landscape of sounds and obviously there's velocity layers and round robin and everything going on and it's just a crazy beautiful way. I love the way that it's sort of tight when you play it pedal up and it sort of starts blooming, the sounds get wider when you put pedal down. You can create some really cool um, percussive textures, sort of control the amount of reverb or resonance if you will. Just a beautiful way of, of combining different elements. Um, let's move on here to the harmonics. They're actually difficult to do, and uh, it took us a little while to realize that pianos actually have great harmonics. It's not something you normally notice when you play the piano, but if you mute certain parts of the mid part of the string, it generates harmonics just like you do on a guitar. And uh, it's just a gorgeous way of, again, of exploring the piano in a new way and create new sounds out of it. So check them out. Sort of like percussive uh, harmonics, I suppose. Uh, let me try, um, let's go back here. Let's just play a little more with the plug here. And I'll try to demonstrate this time around, um, sort of isolate both the pedal up and pedal down, because there's a really notable difference, particularly on the plug. Uh, the first one sounds like a sort of muted guitar, and the other one sounds more like a harpsichord. <laughs> so uh, try to take them out. Let me start here with the, with the pedal up, and then I'll play the pedal down right after. So it almost sounds like a modern harpsichord in my ears. It has that sort of twingy sound that you get from the harpsichord, but it's not as detuned, it's so it has more stable tuning. 
The next one is cool. This is uh, our tapped articulation. Tap means that we essentially just tap with the finger very gently on the strings and use the variety of noise reduction tools and all that to really isolate the sounds because these are so gentle. You can barely hear it with the, with the normal ear. Check them out. <laughs> Happy times. Uh, let me try the next one here. A soft touch is a little in the same ballpark as the tapped articulation in terms of exploring the piano in a new way and, and really dive down and appreciate some of the subtleties in the piano and some of the nuances that you don't really pick up with a normal ear and certainly don't play. Um, on this one, you just put your finger down on the string and it sort of gets a little bit sticky and then they let go and it gives sort of a ging kind of sound and it's cool. Um, it has a percussive quality to it. It's a little more subtle than the pluck, but um, kind of a notable sound. The Grand's Grand is a different experiment with prepared piano. Imagine you put your hands on the strings and mute them, and then you just hit the shit out of it with a hammer. Uh, very short, but very defined. Great for like pop and like house music. The diminished articulation here is another example of sort of extreme sound design. This time around we used bed sheets and quilts over the strings to mute them and obviously that, uh, that sort of shortens down the release of the piano and gives it a percussive quality. But there's a cool thing about this one, uh, when you play it harder it sort of starts blooming a little more even though it's a short sound and it has sort of a defined attack to it. Um, it's, you can get a little more resonance out of it, the quilts uh, still mute the sound but um, there's a little more sort of resonant quality to it. I'll try to play them sort of a little up and down in velocity so you can hear how it, it opens up a little bit, it's a cool sound. The next two ones are very special. The Sombre Grand here was played with felt mallets on the strings. Obviously that's a difficult thing to do if you have a prepared grand piano in front of you in terms of just hitting them right. And um, we had to sort of figure out new techniques in order to not hit surrounding strings and all that. But this is actually a piano played with mallets, very soft mallets. So our super emo sound to it. And that also goes for our boat grand. We call it boat. It's actually not boat, it's e-boat. Uh, we have another library called boat grand where we use traditional Boeing. But what we learned from that is that using fish wire, which is what you normally do on a, on a boat grand, it has a very unique quality to it, but maybe not as playable as you want, as it's very, very hard to keep a stable fish wire going. So this time around we used EPO and it's actually vastly more complicated to get the EPO to work on a piano string. Uh, there's a lot of modification techniques you have to do to record that. But this is one of the most stable notes I've ever heard on the piano. It almost sounds like a synth and the basses are fat as well. I believe in the beginning I also mentioned this feature here. This is our stack button. When you click it, you can essentially combine any patch you want here. And it's awesome because it allows you to explore even more details within the library. So it might be that you want sort of the percussive quality of the plug, but you want a little more volume from the soft touch or whatever it is you want. Or you maybe want to take the somber grand and combine it with an EPO. And you can combine as many things as you want here. 
And obviously we have load and unload functions here as well. So if you want to get into sort of saving memory, you can do that too. But let me just play a short piece here and just start adding um, articulations on top of each other so you can hear how much you can mangle and transform the sound. It's absolutely awesome for, particular for me, for motion picture, those filmic kind of textures where you really want the percussive thing, but you want body and tonality to it as well. It's a fantastic tool for, gener for generating unique sounds. It takes delay and any kind of outside effects super well as well. So it really allows you, in particular also because we got round robin and pedal up and pedal down features to make very unique advanced percussive textures that are super acoustic without any sort of machine gun effect and all that. Uh, let me try to, uh, let's do another experiment here. Um, let's try uh, on a more subtle type of articulation. So I'm going to get less percussive in this one and, and try to explore more um, combining a more emotional type of textures. Oh, and I should also mention, as you may have noticed down here, you have a variety of colored menus. These allow you to go through articulations in real time because everything is loaded. So each of these key switches correspond with the layout up here. So it essentially allows you to create very complicated cycles of articulation. So if you want some percussive stuff, then emo, and then back to other percussive stuff, uh, you can control all that in real time down here. But let me just uh, end this video up here by um, showing what um, the, it can also sound like when you start combining a few more things. So I have another module loaded here. And then let's take the plucked and the muted shorts here and just blend them together. And just keep in mind, this is all just coming from piano. There's nothing else. There's no processing. I haven't added any effects or anything. This is straight out of the box, pure piano, prepared piano, that is. And I think it's cool that we've been able to, through deep sampling, to get so deep into the piano and create so many unique textures. And again, we also have another video where I'm showing all the percussive parts of the library and all the sort of more effects based stuff as well um, the library contains over 38 different types of deep sample prepared articulations so obviously i'm covering the tonal stuff here but we also have a variety of other things and uh, i hope to see you in the next video mm -hmm.